Hello! If you found this video, you're probably interested in sustainability, social justice, race relations, environmental racism, or some sort of mix of all of those. Okay, so you find yourself working for a campus sustainability department, and you're asking yourself this question. Why do we keep hitting a wall? You may have considered it has something to do with the intersections of race and sustainability. But the theoretical tools to discuss this just weren't there and your staff meetings are more along the lines of how come we only have 10 volunteers regularly coming to our events rather than wow, what do we do with all of these different volunteers from all of these different campus partners? Let's use an example to set the stage. For instance, take two women who both care greatly about sustainability. Both of them bring reusable bags to the store because they believe it will reduce their use of plastic and plastic pollution in general. One is identified as white and one is identified as mixed race. People have different perceptions of the actions of both of these women. While the white woman is seen as hipster and thrifty and exhibiting her love of the environment, Alas, it is not that straightforward for communities of color. Being a woman of color, she has to deal with the stigmas surrounding reusable items, often not making enough money so you have to reuse products or cut corners. Although this is a hypothetical example, people are forced to confront this reality, wanting to model their values but cautious of how they'll be perceived and possibly misrepresented. The following are a few ways of thinking from some rhetorical theorists to break down what's happening when race and sustainability are considered in the same breath, through unique perspectives and how we perceive and process. Bakhtin's ideas of heteroglossia or dual voice discourse provide the platform that people need legitimacy for their voices to be heard and not ranked in comparison to other voices. Work shows us that terministic screens are processes that we all work and think through, making some ideas shareable, but others not shareable. His emphasis on terministic screens being dramatistic shows that there is a performative element to it. Sue Hum's idea of the racialized gaze as design complicates Burke's idea of terministic screens. This is because Burke's idea of terministic screens being conditional, either shareable or not shareable, is not in the same idea as, as Hum's theory that the racialized gaze is not a brute condition and can be worked with by expanding our life worlds. Returning back to the earlier dilemma, it's no wonder that different groups across campus are not interacting and are misunderstanding one another because we literally are saying and perceiving different messages. For instance, campus sustainability groups often talk about environmental racism, but black student unions will talk about Black Lives Matter. Instead of forcing students to join our conversation and use our vocabulary, why not adopt their voice and elevate what they have to say and bring our own ideas to the conversation?